Oh, hi. You got me changing. Speaking of changing, let's talk about the Transformers. Hello! Welcome to Comic Tropes. I'm your host, Chris. Well, folks, I've been doing this show for about three years, so I wanted to do something a little introspective and different this time around. One thing that viewers have asked me to do for a long time is cover my own tropes, and it would be kind of redundant to do the tropes of this show, and if I wanted to promote my own books, I could do that anytime I want. So instead, I found something much weirder and way more special. I found a comic book that I made when I was 10 years old. This thing is bonkers. The thing that I was really into as a kid was Transformers. It's what I loved. Transforming robots. Totally in. I had the toys. I watched as many of the cartoons as I could. As an adult, I'm still amused by things like knockoff Transformers. I found this guy at a dollar store. That's Bloodthirsty the Transforming Dolphin. He turns into a robot because of course he does. But yeah, as a 10 year old, I basically made a knockoff Transformers thing. I made a knockoff Transformers comic book. I didn't even know about comic books at this time. I knew about comic strips, but I loved Transformers and I wanted to show my love by making a big story. I made a 60 page comic about Transformers. What 10 year old does that? I don't know, but I did. You're gonna see a lot of repetitive stuff in this, and I don't wanna interrupt it by constantly commenting on it, so there will just be a counter on the side uh, about these five things. Every time they come up, we'll, we'll add it up. But you're gonna see it a lot. You're gonna see, basically, characters introduce themselves or get introduced all the time. I felt the need to include as many Transformers as possible for some reason. Uh, you're gonna see Space bridges, that was a Transformers thing. A space bridge could teleport you between planets. They use it on the cartoon a lot. For some reason, it inspired me. Basically, I was ripping off the cartoon, but space bridges especially. You're gonna see a lot of slapstick violence because I was really just watching cartoons at this point in time. You're gonna see a lot of bombs especially. Apparently, bombs were really funny and interesting to me. And finally, you're gonna see the plot just recycled ad nauseum of Good guys or bad guys attacking each other's base. You're just gonna see base attacks repeated over and over and over. So in fact, I don't think that 60 pages would be bearable. So I'm gonna do half of that. I'm gonna do 30 pages. I'm just gonna read you this ridiculous story. We're gonna count up the tropes. I think it'll be fun. It's pretty weird. Keep in mind, I made this in pencil on typing paper, so some of the scans are not quite great. You know, it wasn't inked, it's not very dark, it's very lightly sketched, so sometimes scanning it in, the images don't look that great. On the other hand, what 10-year-old's art does look that great. So, without any further ado, let's jump in to a 10-year-old's Transformers comic book. The story begins with heroic Autobot and not at all popular character Power Glide. That's right, his name was Power Glide, the glider flying around town, thinking to himself, ah, what a nice day. Whoa, maybe I spoke too soon. Decepticons attack! Ah! An evil attack on Power Glide from the forest sends him careening to the ground. He gets off a distress call saying, Power Glide to Optimus Prime, save me! Oof! I'm in the forest, west of headquarters! I read you, Power Glide. Autobots, transform and roll! Optimus Prime, the leader of the Autobots, heads out of their volcano base where their spaceship crashed millennia ago. And we see more obscure Transformers. These Transformers were mail-away only characters that never showed up in the comics or cartoon. And they're shouting, Come on, let's get the Decepticons! Bombshell the Insecticon is shooting bombs and says, Oh no you don't! An Autobot with a drill called Nose Cone drills up behind Bombshell and says, Oh no, you don't, you mean! What? And the Autobots heroically shoot Bombshell in the back. In this panel, you don't even get to see the people talking, but it's the leaders of the good guys and the bad guys, Optimus Prime and Megatron. Why did you shoot Power Glide, Megatron? Because we're going to get some of the things and then we didn't want an Autobot, but I'll kill you first, Optimus! 
Not so fast, Megatron. Prepare for handle, Soundwave! Megatron transforms, that's why he's got swirling lines around him, and he drops awkwardly into the hands of Soundwave, who shoots at Optimus Prime's feet, and then he ejects some cassette tapes that turn into small animals. One of his cassette tapes is a robot named Rumble, who starts pounding the ground, forming a small earthquake, opening a hole underneath Optimus Prime, who promptly drops his gun like the heroic leader he is, and says, Oh no, I dropped my gun. This is another trope, but it's not worth counting, because you can count on it every two pages. I end things on a cliffhanger, asking questions of the audience. I don't know where I got this, because as I said, I wasn't reading comic books at this time, and comic strips generally don't have cliffhangers, so the best I can guess is from Batman reruns, the Batman 1966 live-action TV show that would end a lot of its episode on a cliffhanger. So that's what I did. Will Optimus Prime get his gun and save Power Glide? Will he fall in the earthquake? Are the Autobots doomed? Find out in the next episode. I'm getting out of here, now! Now all of a sudden Power Glide can fly, and he thinks to himself, I'll go get Prime's gun. He pushes Optimus Prime out of the way of the earthquake, flies down in, picks up the gun, and drops it off by Optimus. Megatron, still way off model, shouts, Decepticons, attack! Instead of the Decepticons attacking, confusingly the Autobot Warpath is shooting a tree. Then the Decepticon Shockwave, who turns into a big gun, and who usually lives on Cybertron, their home planet, is just standing there. He shoots the tree. The tree falls on a transformed Warpath. Crash! Uh-oh, it's a mini cliffhanger. Let's flip the page. Warpath explains why the tree crashed around him, saying, Nothing like Trailbreaker's force field! Form Devastator! And a Decepticon, I believe his name was Mixmaster, transforms. That's not too bad. And he merges with five other Constructicon allies to form Devastator. And then from off screen, we hear, Call in Omega Supreme for the Autobots. Both of those examples are relatively on model because I actually owned those toys. Whereas Megatron, you'll frequently see, is not quite right because I didn't own him at the time, so I didn't know exactly how to draw him. There was no internet, there was no reference I could easily pull. I didn't know about the comic books, so I was doing it all from memory. So some characters are way off, and some of them are very accurate, but their proportions get weird because I didn't know how to lay out a page. Will the Decepticons get the fuel and get rid of the Autobots? What fuel? Are the Autobots doomed? I asked that last time. Find out in Episode 3. The Decepticon Frenzy is apparently sucking up oil. It's just sitting oil. And he's sucking it into something that the TV cartoon called an Energon Cube. Basically, the Decepticons could convert all sorts of energy into a fuel source they used called Energon Cubes. But if you look behind him, there's some dynamite. We're going to count that as a bomb. And if we travel the fuse up the tree, for some reason, Power Glide, who can fly, is just tied himself to another tree branch. He has a plunger to explode the dynamite. And he's saying, this bomb will stop you, Frenzy. Ah! And Power Glide bravely flies away after exploding the Decepticon in his back. Back at Autobot headquarters. And that's a character called Laserbeak dropping a bomb off at the Autobot's base because no one's there to defend it. Over in the forest, some random guys are fighting. Apparently it causes a fire. And this guy, who I'm going to guess is Huffer, shouts, Help, Inferno and Red Alert! And Inferno and Red Alert, help! In the next panel, we see one of the Constructicons saying, Constructicons, disassemble, and Omega Supreme's foot, who's leaping away, saying, Look out, Autobots. So yeah, I ended a page on the cliffhanger of Devastator battling Omega Supreme, and apparently that all happened off camera so that you could see things like dynamite exploding a guy, or some bombs getting dropped off at bases, so... Excellent pacing, ten-year-old me. In the sea... This is the Autobot Sea Spray, who apparently is looking at the Decepticon's underwater base, and he says to himself, Huh? What the... The Decepticon's hidden hideout! It's going down! I'll stop them! And Sea Spray has some sort of R2-D2 mechanical arm that puts a bomb on both the base and apparently on Megatron, who is in the base, and Megatron doesn't notice. Later... And that's actually not a bad interpretation of the Decepticon's underwater sea base. We can see an explosion, and the Decepticon's base begins filling with water. 
Cut to Megatron being drowned by the water, we can also see some sort of weird piranha fish just for the hell of it, and Megatron thinks to himself, I'll get you, Prime! Will the Decepticons die? Will the Autobots find the time bomb in time to destroy it? Find out in episode four. Will the Decepticons die? The stakes just went way up! There's an explosion at the top of the Decepticons' undersea base, and Megatron just simply floats out and says, You didn't get us yet, Autobots! Back at Autobot headquarters, close the door for the night! Slam! Ding! Boom! Hmm, it sounded like there was an explosion outside. Surprise! The Autobots have a steel door that apparently closes at night for safety. Never saw that on the cartoon, but that's good thinking, and it protected them from the bomb. But the explosion seems to have ignited some gunpowder on the ground. And even though that happened, I guess I wasn't sure it was clear enough, so in the very next panel, Sea Spray's foot is rushing into the base, and he's using a mechanical arm to light the fuse. He comes into a seemingly empty base, and Sea Spray says, Anybody here? We see a boombox that says, Hee hee, and it makes all sorts of loud noises. And he says, Ow, my ears! Stop that loud rock and roll music, blaster! Okay. Sea Spray says, I found the Decepticons and got rid of them. And in case my time bomb didn't work, I put a gunpowder pack on Megatron and lit a fuse to it. Sea Spray put a gunpowder pack on Megatron, and somehow that's going to work across the ocean. I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe I didn't really understand exactly how gunpowder worked. That's my best guess, because I'm treating it like it's some sort of huge extension cord that cannot be broken. A caption box helpfully tells us where the Decepticons are. Who knows where that is? But apparently it's a spaceship somewhere, and they're saying, we now have enough Energon cubes to get back to Cybertron. And then something else that I can't read. They take off at Autobot headquarters. That's Sunstreaker, the first Transformer I ever owned, and he's standing awkwardly because he's looking up in the sky and he's saying, Oh no! The Decepticons are going back to Cybertron! Will the Decepticons get away? Find out in Episode 5. No, the Decepticons won't get away because apparently that gunpowder fuse finally hit Megatron, and now it's falling to the ocean where it seems to explode, and it reads, Sea Spray explains how he got rid of the Decepticons. Or did he? Optimus Prime is standing on a cliff overlooking the ocean, and we see the obscure Transformer Cosmos, a transforming UFO, walk up to Optimus Prime and says, Aren't you glad we're rid of the Decepticons, Prime? I wish I could say that, Cosmos. I wish I could say that. Meanwhile, a little off in sea, and there's an escape pod in the ocean that helpfully reads, Escape Pod. We see Starscream, one of the most popular Decepticons, who was always trying to usurp Megatron, but apparently that was not something I was interested in exploring. He just says, We made it! Apparently all the Decepticons are little dots floating on the ocean, and they all shout at once, Where's Megatron? Megatron spits water out of his mouth so that you could tell he was underwater, and he says, Right here, you fools! Later, at the new underwater Decepticon base, they just easily made another one, and I can't read what's being said here, but basically Megatron has built some sort of a laser cannon. Later, for a test. Ready, everyone? Yes! And the laser shoots some sort of a strange beam. It blows up a mountain, and the Decepticons say, Did you see that? Such power! Now we can get rid of the Autobots! Later, at the Autobots' base, fire! And we see the Autobots' base exploding! Ha <laughs> ha! We did it! Goodbye what's left of you, Autobots! Cut to Optimus Prime saying, Nice illusion of the base, Mirage. Yep, Mirage just made an illusion. That's all the Decepticons did was blow up an illusion. A little off in a forest, Megatron has a brand new look, apparently, and this time he says, Now that the Autobots are gone, we can get enough Energon cubes to go back to Cybertron. The Decepticons seem to just want to go back to Cybertron. Maybe the Autobots should just let them at this point. I don't know what the benefit is in keeping them from getting back to Cybertron. It seems like it would at least keep humanity safe. No way, Megatron. Optimus Prime bravely hides behind a tree and shoots. 
There's Ravage. That's not too bad of an illustration for a 10-year-old. He's a Jaguar that transforms from a cassette tape, and we can see that Soundwave is shouting from off-screen, Eject Ravage! He's coming right at Bumblebee, one of the most popular Transformers. Ravage shoots at Bumblebee, but Bumblebee jumps out of the way, and Ravage says, Growl! Growl? 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 See, he shot the tree, the tree is falling over. Bonk! Growly hoo This is closer to Looney Tunes than Transformers. Just go with it. We see a Decepticon marked train that then transforms into a spaceship because a bridge is out. He shoots some lasers and transforms into a robot. That's Astro Train. I believe I borrowed a friend's toy to get that reference right. Soundwave ejects another cassette. Eject Rumble. <laughs> oh no! Help! Yes, Rumble again created an earthquake, and this time Windcharger fell into it. Don't worry, Windcharger, here I come. And believe it or not, that's Twin Twist, a very obscure Transformer who never made it onto the show or into the comics, I don't think. And he says, Twin Twist at your service. Thanks. Later, and we just get a montage of all sorts of robots fighting. We see Sludge the Dinobot. Jazz apparently has loud music coming out of his hip. That's pretty cool. And Jetfire firing all sorts of different lasers and bombs. Very exciting. And yet again, Megatron shouts, Decepticons, retreat! I know where to get Energon cubes now! Later, apparently Megatron did know where to get Energon cubes. It looks like the Decepticons have collected quite a healthy stack of them. And we now see, later at Decepticon headquarters, a robot hand pushes a button. Is the bridge through space ready? Yes. That's Shockwave, who we earlier saw on Earth, but apparently is now back on Cybertron, so continuity be damned. And it's our first instance of a space bridge. The Decepticons have built a space bridge. It says, are we all ready? Optimus Prime shows up. Who knows how he figured this one out? He just shouts, no, Megatron. And there's a bunch of energy in the sky as the space bridge opens, and we see Megatron has been sucked up into it, but is somehow able to physically grab a hold of the portal, keeping himself from being sucked away. It ends on this cliffhanger. Will Megatron be sucked up to Cybertron without the other Decepticons? Find out in episode eight. Help! Ah! It's closing! Megatron! Help! And apparently this laser blast opens the portal back up, and uh, Decepticon shouts, Quick, get out, Megatron! Thanks, Frenzy, but quick, everybody get in! And all the Decepticons jump into the portal that Megatron was just trying to prevent himself from getting sucked into. There's Brawn, not drawn like he is in the cartoon, drawn just like the toy is, and he shouts, Let's go get him, Prime! Okay, and that's Optimus Prime's foot, indicating everybody jumped into the space bridge. Meanwhile, in the warp, and that's supposed to be a beam going across the cosmos, and all of the Transformers are jammed into this transportation beam, we now see Cybertron, believe it or not, and all of the Autobots and Decepticons fall out of it, and we instantly hear, Decepticons, attack! Come on, Autobots! Roadbuster's the name! Beating Decepticons is my game! And even though I've spelled Decepticons several times, I misspelled it there, and I felt the need to include Roadbuster, a toy that I didn't own and that never appeared on the cartoon. Whatever. Shockwave is in the computer control room, and he's thinking to himself, Oh no! A malfunction! The bridge will bring them all back to Earth! So the space bridge opens right back up, Laserbeak gets sucked into some sort of pillar or structure. We can see through the warp zone that Earth is very far away. And once again, somebody off screen is shouting, saying, Oh no, we're being sucked back, but it's closing too. I have no idea who this Autobot is, but he's shouting, Help, I'm being sucked in the hole. Help. Now we're seeing through his eyes, and we see Gears and Optimus Prime flying toward him, and Optimus Prime says, Look out! And they all get sucked through the hole. We see this warp energy jumping across space, and Bumblebee seems to be crammed up against it like he's being pushed against the glass window. It goes to, I guess, Earth. Good job, ten-year-old me, at figuring out what a single continent looked like. And they all fall out. Some sort of laser blast goes into a mine, 
and we see a random Autobot that I can't tell who it is just drilling in the mine, and apparently he gets shot in the back by that laser blast. Turns out he's okay, he jumped down into a trap door, then some rocks fall on top of him, but he picks them up and says, <laughs> that has nothing to do with anything, moving on. Later, at the Autobot headquarters, Constructicons attack! And Optimus Prime picks up all six Constructicons and throws them into space just by himself, saying, I'm gonna put you in orbit. In outer space. We'll get you for this, Optimus Prime. Apparently, the Constructicons were hurled all the way to the moon, and they shout to each other, Form Devastator. So they all join together, they form a bigger robot, and they say, Next stop, Optimus Prime. Ha 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 ho! Optimus Prime is engulfed in shadow, and he says to himself, Uh-oh. Very Optimus Prime thing to shout. He's picked up by Devastator, who says, Goodbye, Prime. Later, and we see that Optimus Prime is now just ahead. He's beaming a signal back to his base, saying, Help! Here's the back of a random Transformer who's looking at their computer, Teletran 1, and saying, Teletran 1, where's Prime? Their computer helpfully reads, On a highway north of headquarters. Very good GPS coordinates. Later, I believe that's an Autobot shooting his way through any obstacles to get to his leader. Now we get introduced to a ton of Decepticon jets all at once, and they all shout their names. Dirge, Ramjet, Thrust, Thundercracker, Blitzwing, Starscream, Skywarp. And they all shoot something, and apparently that Autobot was named Topspin because Optimus Prime's head says, Topspin! And Topspin is just lying in a crater, so that was not very helpful. Then again, if your leader is headless, maybe send more than one Autobot to help him. But apparently Topspin is okay because in the very next panel he's shooting some sort of fire on top of Optimus Prime and he says, I'll fix you Prime, later. Thanks Topspin. That's right, Topspin is now the best medic the Autobots have. He dumps some lasers on Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime is healed. Folks, this is 10 year old logic at its finest. Where the Decepticons are, and Megatron has changed his design once more, this time he shouts, With this acid bomb, we'll rid the Autobots! Launch the missile! And this missile melts away the top of some sort of mountain. So then later, we're shown another missile is this time going at the Autobots mountain. It explodes near the top. It eats away almost all of the top. But out of the top pops a little Autobot with a laser gun. And he says, look out! And he shoots a laser blast back. That cannon hits the ground. Nobody can hit anything in this, apparently. And Megatron shouts, Prepare for Handle Soundwave! We've already seen this. This time, Soundwave is just awkwardly holding his arms up in the air, ready to catch Megatron. Not looking, but he's ready to catch him. Apparently he did, because in the next panel we just see Megatron shooting, and somebody off screen saying, Ah, who knows what's happening? Let's figure it out. The next panel is no help, but the one after that shows gears falling to the ground. He hits the ground. Crack! He breaks into a million pieces. A Decepticon laughs at him. Ha ha! And then shoots. Hee hee! Trailbreaker jumps up out of nowhere, shooting some sort of a force field, saying, Oh no you don't! And he protects gears from being shot anymore. And then apparently Ratchet, the Autobot medic, drives up, saying, I'll fix you, gears! Later, at the Decepticons' headquarters, yeah, apparently they left, and now their headquarters has just launched a cannon up out of the ocean, and they're shooting a bomb at the Autobot headquarters, and the bomb goes right into the Autobots' headquarters. Someone says, oh no, an acid bomb! Splatter. And we see Optimus Prime falling to the ground, saying, ugh, later. Quick, get the Autobots in the spaceship to the sun, and we'll send it there! We cut to later, and apparently Optimus Prime is waking up out of being knocked out, and he says, Ugh, where are we? I just started functioning. Cosmos, where are we headed? To the sun! Back where Perceptor and Omega Supreme are, which is apparently still Earth, Teletran 1 says that all other Autobots are on the way to the sun! Later, Almost there, Omega! And apparently Omega Supreme is transformed into a rocket ship. He's blasting asteroids out of the way. 
there's a spaceship that's almost touching the sun. You can see that it's starting to melt and all the Autobots are shouting from inside, ah! Omega Supreme collides with them and Perceptor says, they're falling and so are we! And they fall back to presumably Earth, does not look very much like Earth, but you can tell that it must be because there's a sun to the right and a moon to the left. The spaceship with all of the Autobots crashes to the ground and explodes. There's another cliffhanger. Meanwhile, we see another version of Megatron who says, Now that the Autobots are gone, we can make New York look like Cybertron. That's a plot that was ripped off from the TV show, and apparently that's New York looking like some sort of Cybertron-esque metal planet. Back where the Autobots crashed, I'm glad we survived. I'm squashed. And apparently everybody is just bunched up in a tight force field. So they did survive even though they crashed all the way from the sun to Earth. New York. Go get them, Autobots! Ah, there's Grimlock and some of the other Dinobots like Swoop and Sludge. The Insecticons appear and it is Shrapnel, the leader, says, Insecticons, attack! And I actually think I drew those pretty well. I would say that, like, for a 10-year-old, those Insecticons, they look good. I'm gonna pat myself on the back for that one. Ironhide's the name! And that has nothing to do with anything because now we cut back to some more of the Dinobots just running around. Somebody says, Skywarp and Buzzsaw are retreating. And because they do, somebody says, Decepticons, retreat! Apparently that's the bar for when it's time to retreat. If Skywarp and Buzzsaw are giving up, it's time for everybody to give up. Later, the Autobots fix New York, and I don't know about you, but that looks like no New York I've ever seen, so I'd say the Autobots did a bad job. Back at Autobot headquarters, Time Warrior and Autotor say it's 632, time for a break. But the Decepticons say, Deceptor says it's 632, time for a fight. This is the pinnacle of me forcing Transformers stuff into the comic. There were just Transformers watches, they went into the comic. I was determined to put everybody in. And, oh no, the Stunticons formed Menasaur, but the Aerial Bots can form a giant too. So, form the Aerial Bot Giant Superion. And it's spelled many different ways. Apparently, I could not guess at how that was spelled, so I just sort of took two different guesses in a row at it. One Transformer runs up and says, Sideswipe is here! And then a bunch of Autobots just announce their names to no one in particular. Whirl. Oist. Skids. Hound. Open the weird zone hole! Surprise, the Decepticons have some sort of weird space bridge that opens a parallel reality called the Weird Zone. This isn't very well explained, it's my own original idea, and I just sort of throw it out there and I let the reader try to figure it out. Here's some more character introductions. Deluxe Insecticons, we're finally rid of the Autobots! Yay! In the Weird Zone, Optimus, we're in a dimension called the Weird Zone, where most things are backwards. Blue Streak? Yes. Prowl? Yes. Smoke Screen? Yes. Go with Grapple and Tracks to imagine a space bridge. It'll come true. Don't try to make sense of this, it's just happening. Some Autobots imagine a space bridge, it does appear, and they jump in and are transported right back to Earth. Look out for the Night Glow race cars. I'm an Autobot. I'm a Decepticon. A Decepticon jet drops a bomb with a time bomb on it. it sticks itself on top of the Autobots base. The Autobots drive home and we're told later it explodes. The whole mountain is engulfed in an explosion and someone inside says, the force field helped. The Decepticons really need to focus on getting rid of all those force fields. That, that should be priority number one at this point. The next day, what a nice day. Windcharger decides to transform on top of two fault plates that pull apart and he says, help! And he falls into a river below and apparently breaks all apart. In the Autobot's base, their computer says, red alert for wind charger. He is at a cliff south of headquarters. So I think we're starting to get a real good idea of the geography here. There's the headquarters. Somewhere over here is a forest. Somewhere up here is like a highway. And somewhere down here is a cliff. So, gives you a pretty good sense of where everything is. Meanwhile, outside, 
and there's just an Autobot train for no real reason and it's shooting and there's all sorts of smoke in the air. We see a Decepticon helicopter dropping a bomb, maybe a tank, if so that's one of my worst drawings ever. And somebody from off screen says, you'll never find out that our cliffs that open destroyed wind charger. Oops! Our cliffs that open destroyed wind charger. Now that's a plan. A little later at the cliffs, we're coming down. Later, after Ratchet fixes Wind Charger, what a day. Better go back now. Megatron to Laserbeak, destroy any Autobot you see. Yeah, he had to be told that. Wind Charger is driving fast down a highway uh, in a canyon. Apparently, Laserbeak first crashes into the canyon wall, falls to the ground, gets back up, is shooting all around Wind Charger, and he says, uh oh. You can see him zipping around the edge of cliffs with explosions going off right beside and behind him, and he's shouting, Whoa, close call! Laserbeak blows up a bridge so Windcharger has nowhere left to go, and he shouts, Tinfoil Turkey! Apparently he transforms, and he says, My magnetic field will get him! Beep! Laserbeak thinks, I found his base's weak spots! Apparently that magnetic gun shoves Laserbeak back into a canyon wall. Windcharger jumps up and says, this bomb will stop you, Laserbeak. He puts a bomb in the hole with Laserbeak. It explodes and Laserbeak apparently is not killed. He just sort of flies away awkwardly. Later, the Decepticons go to blow up the Autobots base. They shoot it, there's a massive explosion, and we're told this cliffhanger, which is where we're gonna end our story. Have the Decepticons finally destroyed the Autobots? Find out in episode 16. It's a weird story, man, and I think you can pretty much guess where it goes from there. There might be a few more bombs exploding bases. Yeah, I think that it's uh, realistic to think that that's where we're headed. Anyway, if you really enjoy this, I do have another 30 pages of this. It's, it's bonkers. I know it's not very good. Uh, I will say that after this, I think some of the artwork actually does improve. It's that sort of philosophy of if you spend 10,000 hours on something, you become a master at it. Well, I definitely didn't spend 10,000 hours, but I spent enough hours that I think I actually started to make some progress as an artist. I'm not trying to toot my own horn. It's still quite bad. I hope you enjoyed this ridiculous comic. Very, very different than a typical episode, I know. But I just wanted to share something really crazy and silly with you. Uh, and with that said, before we go, let's take a look at what kind of fan art came in this week because we got a lot of excellent stuff this week. Seth Leoric sent in a drawing based on the last episode about Blue Beetle and how he none too subtly looks like the Phantom. Robbie Balfin also sent in artwork based on last week's episode. It features me as the Blue Beetle. Overcompensating, don't you think? Jarrell sent in a cool cover referencing how my channel was originally titled Skunk Ape. You can see more of Jarrell's comics at the link shown there. Grimlock made this colorful piece of Spider Kid trying out his new legs and recommending my show. Thanks. Joe Rollman gave me a superhero cape with epaulets that read CT. Very cool. Joe includes links to his social media. Matt Farmer envisioned me as Thanos, but I have the Infinity Capsules. I like that. Matt has more art on his Instagram. My old friend and professional comics artist Scott Iwahashi came across my channel and sent in this beautiful artwork featuring me as Doctor Doom it's awesome to reconnect, Scott. Thank you very much. Nigel Lowry sent in this Blue Beetle piece based on last week's episode. Since he's from the UK, I think it's appropriate to call his idea cheeky. Emma Thatcher sent in this fantastic caricature. You can see more of her artwork at the links provided. Crew Newcomer says that they like how I gave away Gachapon at the end of every show because they actually do the same thing at their vintage clothing store. That inspired this artwork, and you can check out their store on Instagram. Rich sent in this beautiful logo, which he says he made in between his job and working on a comic. Thank you, Rich. Keith Stoll sent in some artwork to celebrate this channel becoming three years old. It is perfect. And Wes sent in some really cool art featuring me with Shazam's powers. Or he saw a photo of me from five years ago. 
If you would like to have your artwork shown on this channel, I'm always happy to do that. Uh, just make sure that it has something to do with comic tropes, and I'll be happy to include it. And then, on top of that, I will assign a number to everybody. I've got a stack of numbers here. I drop them in a bag to draw a winner, and that winner gets a gachapon that I picked up in Japan. Now, we are running kind of low, but I'm planning on going back to Japan in November, so I may take a break, but um, I'll still be happy to feature any artwork. Okay, we've got number six this week. Let's see who number six is. Number six is Matt Farmer. Congratulations, Matt. I will get your contact information and send that to you. Let's see what you won here. All right. Uh, I think it's Star Wars. I think so, yeah. I can already sort of see a little Star Wars logo there. So, uh, yeah, something, something weird and Star Wars-y. Uh, I'll send that your way. So congratulations. Thank you everyone for submitting artwork and uh, thank you for supporting this channel. Three years. Uh, that just sort of flew by. Um, it's amazing how fast that went. And uh, I've got some announcements real quick before we leave. I created some new merchandise. I've got several t-shirt designs that you can look at now as well as a Comic Trope sticker if that's something you want to slap anywhere. I've got uh, three different t-shirt designs. Uh, I priced them as low as I could basically. I, I think I get like a dollar profit. It's just uh, through Teespring and, and the reason I'm using that is because Teespring and YouTube are affiliated so there's already an integration so I could just have it shown if you're watching this video on YouTube you're gonna see links to that right underneath the video so I just figured hey it can't hurt I'm not telling you that I want you to run out and get one but if you want to be part of this overall community that we're all building with your comments and your appearances on patreon or uh, on the uh, what do you call that server where everybody talks uh, I've got one of those it starts with a D I'll just put it here because I can't think of what it's called right now I'm so out in terms of social media but I'm also on Twitter so you can read me there you reach me there um so uh, if you want to support the show I know I plug this a fair amount uh, I'll explain why in a sec but I do have patreon where you can uh, support the show uh, at a tier as low as one dollar a month I've got sort of rewards at various tiers or if you just want to do a one-time tip and you're in a position to do that I've got an account called coffee uh, so those are both two places where you can donate to the show and basically the reason I have that is of course to offset some of the costs of this show but hopefully also to a degree you know to to sort of uh, to help me uh, because uh, you know everybody needs income and uh, well basically I'm, I'm beating around the bush. Uh, my fiance and I are uh, buying a house, so I'm really excited about that. I think it's going to be a great thing for both of us, and I actually think it's going to benefit the show as well. I'm going to have a dedicated room where I can produce the Comic Tropes show. I'm very excited about that. It's really nice. It's going to help me, basically. It's going to help make life easier. But, of course, this is also a huge move. And, it, you, you know, anyone out there who's ever bought a house or been with anyone that's bought a house, you know, it basically depletes all your savings because you're throwing pretty much everything you have at things like a down payment and closing costs. So I would never ask you guys to help with that. But that's why I also put up these links so that if you're in a position and you choose that you want to do something like that, I just want you to know I'm grateful. Um, I'm not spending it on frivolous things other than potentially weird things like this robotic costume. But hey, I'll try to get as much use out of this as I can. I already used it in a Godzilla episode a while back. Hey, we've got that Godzilla movie coming up, so you should rewatch my Godzilla episode after this. All right, now I'm just rambling. Some of that is because I'm actually quite sick. So I'm just gonna just end everything right now and say thank you very much. And until I see you next time, keep reading comics.